Hello and welcome. Before you watch this video, try this problem on your own. Alright, so let's start by reading this problem. It tells us that there's a cell phone company and it charges $60 a month for up to one gigabyte of data. So we know that initially, if we're looking at how much we're paying, whatever that amount is, it has to start at $60 and then we add some amount from there. And they tell us that the cost, here it is, of additional data is five cents per megabyte, right? So here, uh, we're adding on five cents for each additional megabyte we use, um, and that is on top of the $60 uh, that we originally pay. If D represents the number of additional megabytes used, and C represents the total charges at the end of the month, which linear equation can be used to determine the user's monthly bill? Well, I would write that 60 plus and then 0 0.05 times D equals C. I would write that for my equation. Now, if you, if you want to know, my thinking here is that we have 5 cents times the number, right, D of megabytes that we're using, and that will give you the cost that we're adding on the 60. And then if you put these together, you get C, the total cost of the bill. Uh, and if that's not making sense, let's try a quick table set this up. Um, you can always do this. You can always set up a table or a graph or an equation to analyze or model the situation that you're looking at. So here, D is our independent variable. That's the number of megabytes we use. And C is the total cost. And we're going to test out, does C actually equal 60 plus 0 0.05 times C? Right? Um, so here, let's say we use 0 um, let's say 1 or 2, or then, and then a jump up a little bit, 10 uh, megabytes of data. What will this equation tell us the cost is? Let's see if it makes sense. So if we plug in 0 to our equation, C would equal what? It would equal 60 plus 0 0.05 times C, and oh, times D, excuse me, and D here is 0. And what does that equal? 60 plus, well, 0 times anything, the 0 product property, that's 0, and that's 60. So that means if we don't use any megabytes, 0 megabytes, we pay the $60. So far, it makes sense. What happens if we use 1 megabyte of data? Well, that's 0 0.05 times 1, right? So here, 60 plus, in this case, 5 cents is $60 and 5 cents. So that makes sense. We use 1, right? We use 1 megabyte of data, so our cost went up by the cost for one megabyte of data, 105 cents. Then if we have two, right, for D, that means we're using two megabytes of data, it's 60 plus 0 0.05 times two. And what does that equal? Well, that's 60 plus, well, two times five cents is 10 cents, or a dime, and that's 10 cents, right, $60 and 10 cents. So it's making sense, every data, uh, megabyte of data we add, we add five cents to our bill, and then if we jump up, we can expect that if we use 10, megabytes of data, that's like using 50 cents of, or adding 50 cents, excuse me, to our bill. So let's see if that works. 60 plus 0 0.05 times 10, what does that equal? Well, that equals $60.50. So here we can see that if we went up uh, here by 8 megabytes, our cost went up by 40 cents, which makes sense because 8 times 5 is 40 cents. And that's 8 groups of megabytes, or... 40 cents, and that's working. So I'm just showing you that the equation makes sense. Here, um, notice that the C is on the left-hand side of the equation each time, and our C is on the right-hand side of the equation. Um, the symmetric property says that we can switch the order of these things, right? The sides, the left side here, the right side, excuse me, here, and that will not change the value of your equation. So we're looking for the same equation, but a mirror image where left is right and right is left. And here's where we see it in choice four. C equals 60 plus 0.05 D. All right, thanks.